Africa's youngest president, Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso, is doing something Thomas Sankara was assassinated for. That is distancing from the West. He decided to make his country Burkina Faso great again by avoiding the West's control and paving new relations with non-West countries. Not only that, but he wanted to make Burkina Faso autonomous, prosperous and powerful by using the resources it had. Therefore, since he planned to deprive the West of the natural resources it was getting at a cheaper price, he himself was replaced and murdered. However, Ibrahim Traore is doing more than what Thomas Sankara was planning, challenging the West and intimidating it. He is forging alliances with countries that the West calls enemies, presenting a picture of the bravest and fearless leader in Africa. But what has he done recently that has scared the West? And they are planning to replace and probably murder him like they did with Thomas Sankara or Muammar Gaddafi. Let's find that out in this video. A Russian delegation recently engaged in discussions with Burkina Faso's interim president, Ibrahim Traore, focusing on potential military cooperation, as confirmed by the Burkinabe presidency. The delegation, led by Russian Deputy Defense Minister Yunus Bek Yevkurov, was a follow-up to President Traore's prior talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin during the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg last July. These developments have brought Burkina Faso's relations with Moscow into the spotlight, especially since the country expelled French troops earlier this year, racing speculations about deepening security ties with Russia. Since Russia is perceived as an enemy of the West, allying with it directly means challenging the West. It also gives a clear message that Burkina Faso will choose its allies depending on the benefits they offer, not judging their credibility on whether they are enemies of the West or not. The meeting between Burkina Faso and the Russian delegation centered on areas of cooperation, with a strong emphasis on military aspects. Yes, the two countries are thinking about collaborating militarily, something the West is scared of. This included deliberations on the training of Burkinabe officer cadets and officers across various levels, potentially including pilot training in Russia as well. However, the official statement did not explicitly mention whether Russian military trainers would be dispatched to Burkina Faso. Earlier, as most of Burkina Faso's soldiers got their training from institutions set by France, they were more or less influenced by France. However, things will be different now because Russia has entered the game. Earlier in late July, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the transitional president of Burkina Faso, attended the second Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg. This gathering is a substantial diplomatic and economic test for Russian President Vladimir Putin, occurring a year and a half after the initiation of the war in Ukraine. President Traoré's regime has confronted exceptional challenges since he took office in October 2022, chiefly dealing with a surge in jihadist attacks. In response, he sought support from Russia and obtained weapons and attack helicopters in March. Presently, discussions in St. Petersburg focus on forging new economic and military agreements as Burkina Faso aims to combat terrorism with deliberate and assertive cooperation from Moscow. As these diplomatic conversations progress, there are also speculations about undisclosed agreements that might enable Russia to bypass international sanctions, particularly following its divergence from European markets. The talks aim to identify solutions for Burkina Faso's security and development, reinforcing its mutually beneficial partnership with Russia. Perhaps, these secret agreements will focus on a win-win strategy, where both countries will try to reap benefits, sidelining the West. That's why Ibrahim Traoré officially called Russia Burkina Faso's strategic ally. This was a direct message to the West that Burkina Faso would cooperate and make deals with Russia, despite the earlier demand of condemning it in the Ukraine war. Concerns about Ouagadougou's relationship with Moscow have risen as anti-French sentiments have grown in some parts of the region. In February, Burkina Faso expelled French troops after terminating an agreement that had allowed France to combat armed groups in the country since 2013. During a rare televised interview, Traoré was questioned about Burkina Faso's international allies in the ongoing conflict, which has claimed thousands of lives and displaced around 2.5 million people in the broader Sahel region over the past decade. Traoré responded, The departure of the French army does not mean that France is not an ally. 
We have strategic allies and new forms of cooperation. Russia, for example, is a strategic ally. In just a few sentences, Ibrahim Traore showed the West that Burkina Faso does not have to pick one side. Rather, it will engage with every country, a policy that African countries desperately need. He continued, I am satisfied with the cooperation with Russia. It's candid, he said, seated in military attire and a beret. Now, Western nations are concerned about Russia's growing influence in the Sahel and nearby regions. France withdrew its forces from Mali last year after the military government there began collaborating with the Russian military contractor Wagner Group to combat armed groups. This shows that as long as the West stays in Africa, no Western country feels hostile but if African countries engage with Russia, they feel threatened. But Ibrahim Traore does not care about it, he only cares about what's good for his country, not what the West will like and approve of. That's why Burkina Faso's military leaders have signed an agreement with Russia to build a nuclear power plant to bolster the country's electricity supply. This represents the latest move by the junta to align itself with Russia, following a falling out with most of its Western partners. Since assuming power last year, Ibrahim Traore turned to Russia for economic and military assistance because he knows Russia is a strategic ally. Therefore, Captain Traor sought President Putin's support in establishing a nuclear power plant in Burkina Faso to meet the country's energy needs and those of neighboring nations. He stressed, We have a critical need for energy. This is a pivotal issue for us, because we need to, if possible, construct a nuclear power station in Burkina Faso for electricity production. Our location is strategically important as we are situated in the heart of West Africa and we face an energy deficit in the sub-region. But the nuclear word has shocked the West. There can be tensions in the West that Russia might be offering nuclear secrets to Burkina Faso, making the country a nuclear power. However, initially, this agreement is part of Burkina Faso's goal to achieve 95% electricity access in urban areas and 50% in rural areas by 2030. Currently, Burkina Faso primarily generates electricity from biofuels like charcoal and wood, with oil products accounting for one-third of the total energy supply, according to the International Energy Agency. While South Africa is the sole African nation currently commercially producing nuclear power, more countries on the continent are gradually moving in this direction. Russia is assisting Egypt in constructing a nuclear power plant at a cost of 30 billion, following an agreement signed by Presidents Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and Putin in 2017. A deal to build power plants in Nigeria was also signed with Russia in the same year, although the project has yet to begin. Kenya has announced plans to construct its first nuclear power plant by 2027. Despite an increase in access to energy in sub-Saharan Africa in recent years, the region still contends with low electrification rates, with over 50% of the population lacking access to electricity, as reported by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. But the irony is that despite being rich in natural resources, African countries are still in darkness. But Russia is not. The only country Ibrahim Traore is allying with. The leader of Burkina Faso has openly expressed it. The nation's interest in acquiring additional weaponry from North Korea as part of their recently rekindled diplomatic relations. Well, yes, Ibrahim Traore is allying with Kim Jong-un, North Korea's president and the only person who scares the West like no one else. Ibrahim Traore stressed that much like Russia. North Korea can play a vital role in bolstering Burkina Faso's security and overall development. Traore acknowledged that Burkina Faso's military still relies on North Korean weaponry received back in 1985, stating, North Korea possesses significant capabilities. You should know that resuming diplomatic ties with North Korea is significant proof of power because most countries in the world do not have ties with North Korea due to the West's orders. Ibrahim Traore went on to clarify that the weapons, including heavy armaments, are still actively utilized within their armed forces and they seek to procure more to assist in their ongoing efforts. This development comes following Ouagadougou's announcement in late March that an agreement was sanctioned to appoint a North Korean ambassador to Burkina Faso, 
potentially opening the door for weapons trade between the two nations. Be this agreement likely represented the pinnacle of Burkina Bay North Korean relations. Earlier, Thomas Sankara, often regarded as the founding figure of Burkina Faso, made an official visit to North Korea to meet with Kim Il-sung, North Korea's leader. Kim reportedly presented Sankara with an ivory pistol that Sankara frequently carried. Almost five decades later, Burkina Faso's military leader, Traoré, often likened to Sankara by his supporters, is advocating for a strategic alliance with countries like Russia, Turkey, and North Korea. He stressed, our interests come first, regardless of the ally or nation. We prioritize our interests. We will collaborate with those who are willing to support us in this ongoing struggle, providing us with equipment and assistance. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Since assuming power last year, Traoré has committed to reclaiming approximately 40% of the nation's territory lost to extremist groups associated with Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State since 2015. Consequently, the Burkina Bay leader is turning to historical allies like North Korea for logistical and material support in the battle against these extremist groups. However, it is essential to note that UN Resolution 2270 unequivocally prohibits weapons trade to and from North Korea. The means by which Burkina Faso intends to import arms from North Korea remain uncertain, but it gives a clear message that Burkina Faso is independent and free to choose what it sees fit. Here, the West has to understand that just like any other nation, African countries possess the right to independently shape their foreign policy. They have the liberty to select their allies and partnerships based on what they perceive as their national interests. This essence of sovereignty stresses that these nations are not subject to external influences or control when defining their foreign policy. But even if African leaders earlier knew about that, they chose to be West's puppets, selling their loyalty and national interests. However, Ibrahim Traoré is different, and he knows how to handle the West. Therefore, he is allying with and buying weapons from whatever country he likes. This is a huge blow to the West and its arm factories, which make hundreds of billions of dollars by selling weapons worldwide. Ibrahim Traoré wants to make Burkina Faso an independent country, with the power to decide for itself and diversify its allies. However, he knows that this path won't be easy as Thomas Sankara tried this before him. But he was murdered, and his legacy was lost, which Ibrahim Traoré wants to revive. 34 years ago, Burkina Faso's president, Thomas Sankara, met a tragic fate. Only now are those accused of assassinating him facing trial. Sankara's vision for Burkina Faso, a nation of over 20 million people, could have set the country on a significantly different developmental path if he had survived. Often referred to as Africa's Che Guevara, Sankara was a charismatic reformer and a Marxist authoritarian. He bestowed upon Burkina Faso its name, which translates to land of honest people in the majority Muri language. Seizing power in a 1983 coup led by junior army officers at the age of 33, Sankara started a journey of radical transformation in his country's conservative society. His objectives included eliminating foreign debt, achieving food self-sufficiency, and reducing the influence of France, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank. Yes, Ibrahim Traoré is much like him. Thomas Sankara enhanced the literacy rate, immunized children, weakened the grip of wealthy elites, redistributed land to the impoverished, boosted agricultural output, combated desertification, and streamlined bureaucracy salaries and perks. Interestingly, more focus has been placed on his modest income and lifestyle than on his boldest and most visionary reforms, his pro-Walman policies and programs. Sankara advocated for girls to complete secondary school, introduced voluntary family planning initiatives and ensured that pregnant students could return to school to complete their education. His government also outlawed female genital cutting, forced marriages, and polygamy. Women were appointed to cabinet positions and other top government roles. It was the first African government to integrate women into the military. However, since Sankara was on a mission to distance his country from the West, his revolutionary journey met a tragic end. His regime was toppled by a coup on October 15, 1987, led by Blaise Compaoré, 
who had once been Sankara's closest friend and loyal cabinet member. Some view the coup as the culmination of a personal feud, while others speculate that, in addition to Compaoré's support from powerful conservatives in Burkina Faso, it might have received backing from Côte d'Ivoire and perhaps France. Captain Ibrahim Traoré knows that to bring radical changes, he first has to concentrate power and ensure he lives. It's because he knows the history where the most powerful heads of state were murdered. Therefore, the military leader of Burkina Faso declared that elections were no longer a top priority compared to the urgent issue of security. This statement comes almost a year after Traor seized power through a coup, during which he had initially pledged a return to democracy with presidential elections, slated for July 2024. He also unveiled plans to make changes to the country's constitution, to ensure it better represented the interests of the masses. Traor explained, It's not a priority. I'll be clear about that. Security takes precedence, with regards to the elections. The nation has been grappling with jihadist violence, making security a matter of paramount concern. At the time of his rise to power, Traore had set a goal to bolster security in Burkina Faso within two to three months. However, a year later, the country continues to contend with jihadist attacks. Traore, who assumed office at the age of 34, making him the world's youngest leader, had been sworn in as interim president with a commitment to reclaim territory and facilitate a transitional period leading up to the scheduled elections in July 2024. He also revealed plans for a partial change to the nation's constitution. Traore conveyed on state TV that the current constitution predominantly reflected the perspective of a select group of enlightened individuals to the detriment of the ordinary masses. You see, he has long-term plans to ensure that Hoover comes to power feels obliged to serve his people first, not the West's interests. Ibrahim Traoré wants to make his country and Africa economically robust, so the presidents don't have to sell their loyalty to the West. He also wants to understand and solve the paradox of Africa being rich in natural resources, but being poor economically. Africa boasts about 30% of the world's mineral reserves and 40% of its gold. Yet paradoxically, it remains one of the poorest continents. This conundrum highlights the complex phenomenon known as the resource curse. In 1997, American economists Jeffrey Sachs and Andrew Warner made a crucial observation. Countries rich in natural resources tend to perform poorly economically. This is not just a random observation. It's a broader correlation characterized by a negative relationship between a country's natural resource exports and its GDP growth per capita. Put simply, the more a country relies on exporting its resources as a percentage of its GDP, the slower its real GDP growth per capita. Sachs and Warner's work emphasized, none of the countries with extremely abundant natural resources in 1970 experienced significant economic growth over the next 20 years. In fact, most of the countries that did achieve rapid growth during that period began with meager natural resources. Many sub-Saharan African nations exhibit signs of the resource curse. Despite their wealth in oil, diamonds and other precious minerals, countries like Angola, Nigeria and Sudan grapple with low average incomes and sub-par health indicators. Captain Ibrahim Traore felt anger at how African leaders allowed the West to exploit their resources in return for meager profits. That's why he is planning to reclaim all of Burkina Faso's gold mines, ensuring that the benefits first enrich the people of Burkina Faso and then someone else. By challenging the West, Ibrahim Traore is doing something unprecedented that the West is not habituated to. Therefore, the path can be quite difficult. However, the African leaders striving to enact substantial positive changes in their nations often encounter grave repercussions, which can include their removal from power or even assassination. Leaders such as Muammar Gaddafi of Libya and Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso assumed leadership roles with the intent of challenging the prevailing social, political, and economic structures in their respective countries. Their motivation stemmed from a desire to institute profound alterations and address persistent issues like poverty, corruption, and foreign influence. These policies often disrupted entrenched power structures and vested interests, challenging the status quo. As these leaders attempted to implement their reforms, they encountered resistance from a range of influential entities, 
including domestic elites, foreign governments, and multinational corporations. National corp they were assassinated because the reforms championed by leaders like Gaddafi and Sankara posed a substantial threat to the established order. Their objectives included curtailing the influence of foreign powers and multinational corporations over their country's resources and economies, a direct challenge to the interests of these external actors. Nobody had expected that these leaders, loved by their people, would be made to look a threat. The West used its covert tactics to create opposition to these leaders, escalating to the point of violent overthrows or assassinations. Gaddafi was ousted and killed during the Libyan Civil War in 2011, with support from Western powers. Thomas Sankara was assassinated in a coup led by his close associate Blaise Compaoré in 1987, with suspicions of external involvement. The experiences of leaders like Gaddafi and Sankara function as a deterrent for aspiring African leaders, who may seek to usher in radical change in their countries. They may be apprehensive about the severe consequences they could face, including the looming risk of being overthrown, forced into exile, or even assassinated. But despite knowing this, Ibrahim Traore is in no mood to budge from his stance. He has vowed to make Burkina Faso absolutely independent again, where the people would prosper. He has single-handedly kicked off all Western troops, ensuring that no atmosphere for his replacement or assassination can be staged by the West. Meanwhile, he is continuing to ally with countries that the West is scared of, fearlessly challenging the West. What do you think? Will Ibrahim Traor be successful in breaking the West's influence in Burkina Faso and Africa? Or will he be covertly compromised and the West will once again get its control back? Let us know your thoughts on what Ibrahim Traor should do to be a stronger force in the region. Is allying with powerful countries Russia and China a good strategy? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.